gather around for Jeannie's show. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. I hope you've enjoyed our trip recently to Southeast Alaska. And we continue on today with more on Sitka. I personally can't get enough of Sitka because I was born there. Today, we look at a very unique school, a unique approach to education, and that's Mount Edgecum. I'll be back with more of Sitka, Alaska, the final program in our Southeast series right after this. Heartbeat Alaska is pleased to announce a brand new official hotel. We're brought to you now by Millennium Alaskan Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And... Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Airlines. Thank you, Frontier Airlines, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Welcome back. Tucked away in beautiful Baranoff Island is Sitka, Alaska, one of the most beautiful cities in the world and one of the most historical. Across a little canal is Japonski Island. Mount Edgecombe High School sits on that island. All together, this area is so rich with an astonishing history. Welcome to the first capital of Alaska. This charming town of a little less than 9,000 people shows its diversity with pride and honor. Once a Russian-ruled settlement, it has always been Klinkit land. This hidden paradise holds a history worth learning. <laughs> Behind a wall of masts, the city of Sitka looks like a well-protected fortress, and with good reason. In the late 1700s, the original inhabitants of this area, the Klinkit people of Shiatika, were introduced to the Russian explorers and fur traders. It would be an introduction that the Klinkits would not soon forget. <laughs> Seventeen ninety nine would be the beginning of battles between the Russians and the Klinkit people that would force the Klinkits to take refuge on the other side of the island for the next twenty years. In eighteen nineteen, the Klinkits returned home to their village of Shiatika, only to be segregated and discriminated against by the Russians who had settled on Klinkit land. Through the years, the natives coexisted with the Russians, and in 1867, ownership of Sitka was bought on paper by the United States of America, beginning yet a new way of life for the Clinket people. 
1878, Reverend John Brady started the Sitka Industrial School for Native Boys, which would become the Sheldon Jackson College and would be instrumental in the history of education in Alaska. Another school that has been instrumental in the education of Alaska Natives is Mount Edgecombe High School. From the moment you enter the doorway at the Millennium Hotel, another world surrounds you. It's a world of friendly faces and cordial service. It's a place of great taste and great tastes. The Millennium Hotel is a haven of relaxation and personal restoration, of attentive service and attention to details. But at the end of the day, we won't read you a bedtime story. Although, would you be surprised if we did? Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Nuxlet. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. Sitka, Alaska is home to eight or 9,000 residents, and every year their population swells by the hundreds. Youth from all over the state travel from remote villages to Japonski Island, an island right across the canal from Sitka, to attend Mount Edgecombe. They have a fabulous curriculum, interesting people, and the best cookies around. It's a unique school that has served Native youth for decades and continues that tradition today. It's a school that practices tradition and also teaches different cultures to the students who have come from far away. It started out as a Bureau of Indian Affairs school and back when my parents were students here there were 700 students and now we start out at the beginning of the year with about 340 and now we invite Sitka students, we have some day students here. Many of the students here today are following in the footsteps of their family who years ago attended this prestigious school. It's like a family tradition to come here. I mean, my parents have came here along with all my brothers and sisters before me and I'm the sixth one, so, so it's like a family tradition and everybody knows my family here. My sister and my family the other came here before and then they really liked it and so I thought I'd just try it out. And then after my freshman year I was like, I didn't feel like I didn't go to any other school because I liked it here so much. My mom and dad met here and uh, my dad was in post-grad school for nursing and my mom graduated as a high school senior here. My uncles were in the first graduating class here. My grandfather was a cook here. Um, I'm a third generation Edgecombe employee and my niece who calls me mom is a cheerleading coach so and this isn't a unique family history with Edgecombe there's probably thousands of native families all over Alaska who have some tie to Edgecombe that goes back just as far as mine and they have kids here now. My dad came here he graduated from here in 69 and friend Thomas Sable came here He's like telling me how cool it was, how free it was, how much better it would be. Just came here, just decided to come, so I just came. It's just my opportunities, the how much my horizons have broadened. They're getting so much bigger and bigger. I mean, I pull to my pull my grades together. I can go to like Georgetown or Southern California University of Southern California. I could go to a big school, and I'm gonna too. I'm gonna go to school out of state, somewhere get to know something else besides of Alaska, get to travel a little more. It's broadening my horizon so much, and got a big opportunity to stay away from drugs and having kids when I'm like 18, be here and just be safe, make my parents proud. I think the most important part about Mount Edgecombe is the opportunities that come to these students through this school opportunities from colleges, scholarship sources, um, we have a college and career fair, we have speakers who, who are world renowned who know about Edgecombe. When a uh, student graduates from Edgecombe and they go anywhere, people listen. 
it's like it's like the school talking when a student um, goes anywhere and does anything after being here. A lot of students don't know all the opportunities that are open to them here, are all just the little activities here and there with dance groups and after school clubs and things, but there are a lot, I'd say more than a lot of other schools I know. Just having so much opportunities to go traveling and having all these doors open from here and now I'd have back at home. Because at home you're just like in this little space and you're not even able to do much. Then coming here, it's like, wow, it's really lots of fun. Rachel Marino is the Cultural Activities Coordinator for Mount Edgecombe High School, as well as a former student. Rachel organizes events for the youth that range from arts and crafts to sports to visits from guest speakers, activities that help keep these youth connected to their past as well as their future. Last year we had um, Sidney Huntington. He was uh, featured in the book Shadows on the Koyukuk. He's about 86, I believe. Um, he was our special guest during Founders Week last year. Um, Tony Knoll came to visit us, and I'm not sure if Fran Ulmer came, but um, there are a lot of programs here that will help you with scholarships, and the teachers here, they're great. They really push you to get your work done and help you. And Miss Moreno, she's a lot of fun. I like, to, I like to bake with her. I like to bake. I do it all the time at home. <laughs> and she's an awesome person. She makes a lot of things happen for the students. It's really cool. And she's like always helping people sew stuff and do their native regalia. She's very considerate. She's very polite. She's very, she's got a very good character. She's kind of like a dorm mom, I guess. She's always baking cookies. I help them learn how to bake and cook and sew and bead and make sure they go to dance group practice and in return for them participating, I do a lot of baking. Miss Brito's cookies. <laughs> the best thing. They're the best cookies in the world. You ought to try one with hot chocolate. Oh, they're the best. I like Miss Marino's cookies. Oh, man, don't even know. Man, every Wednesday, I think, like, the whole kitchen is filled with kids, man. It's cheating their ways. I could, I could get my way to two or three cookies, but God, do it. God, be real sneaky around here. It's kind of hard, but you know, there's always a way. If there's a will, there's a way. And I got that will, and I got that cookie. I think I'm going to be baking cookies tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Attending Mount Edgecombe can be the opportunity of a lifetime, but there is one challenge that almost everyone who attends this school has to face. For me, it's like I really miss my family. I'm like connected to them like so hard that it's hard for me to stay away from my family. Sometimes it could be really tough. Homesick. I got used to it and I ended up up staying for three years. I went home last year because of um, family stuff, and I decided to come back, come back this year because I missed it. One thing that really seems to stick out with these youth is the weather and the land here in southeast Alaska, quite different from other parts of Alaska. Bear is so flat and cold, and since I'm here, it's really warm and. There's lots of mountains and trees, and it's kind of weird, but really cool and really warm, and I just love the scenery. St. Paul is all open. There's no trees or mountains or anything, so it's, I like it a lot, and the bird cliffs and the wildlife, and it being a small town, I just like a lot of things about it. But I like Sitka, too. I like the rain and the fog, and just the overall, the overall feeling of it. Here is the rain, tempered rainforest uh, over at home, like cold weather in the, in the fall time. Around here is like rain, mostly it's clear, sunny skies, calm. Also, um, mountains, hiking, hiking up the mountains in a calm, sunny day. Besides hiking mountains, another way that these youth keep themselves occupied is through NYO. 
NYO stands for Native Youth Olympic in Alaska. I'm in NYO, so I know I'm good at it. <laughs> My favorite event is Alaskan High Kick, Seal Hop, One Foot, and Halibut One Arm. I got third place in split pull last year, and I got sixth place in stick pull, eighth place in two foot, and I think I was like on 10th place for still hop. For others, the cure to being homesick means a little cheer. We're headed for a victory. For many of these students, making the adjustment to a large, mostly native school from their smaller village school is easier when they're surrounded by native people their own age. For Stacy Martin of Fairbanks, the situation was a little different. It's different from what I grew up in because I went to like a big school and it's smaller here and it's mostly natives rather than having a whole bunch of different kind of cultures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As a member of the Mount Edgecombe cheerleading squad, Stacy practices hours on end, learning and remembering moves and routines for the big game with Metla Catla. <laughs> It was a good game on both teams' part, but the edge belonged tonight to the Mount Edgecombe Braves as they pulled away to a 10-point victory. You're late, Dad. I know, I know. I'm almost done with my homework. Yeah? Tess is mad at you. What's she mad at me about? You said you would play basketball with her. She said she'll never speak to you again. <laughs> Parents that are involved with their kids are more likely to help keep their kids away from drugs. Okay. <laughs> Nothing but that. <laughs> Just for you, the Ruby Residence. The Ruby Residence is a private residence for women only who are visiting Anchorage for health care services. Come on in. We would like to invite you to stay with us. It's just like home. So bright and brand new here. Meals and transportation to your doctor's appointments are provided. We do accept Medicaid and insurance for lodging and meals. Just for you! Call 333-8746 to make your reservations now. When I was a youth, I remember high school students gathering at our house to visit with my mother and to eat native foods. That's what makes Mount Edgecombe High School so different, so very unique. It is unique, and part of it's because of the friendships, the histories that everyone shares. Thousands of natives have graduated from this fabulous school. What makes Mount Edgecombe stand out from other boarding schools is the attention that is focused on traditional Native practices such as beading, sewing, crafts, and especially dancing. I think the pride in their culture that they come here with and the talent they come here with and their willingness to share their culture with so many people, with the, um, the new students they meet here, they, they work hard and they share and they teach each other the culture and they get rewarded for it and that's inspiring for me. That makes any amount of hours I work worth it to see them come in to dance practice and get happy. They could come in at first and be depressed about um, too much homework, being homesick, 
um, maybe they break up with a boyfriend or girlfriend or have roommate problems, whenever they hear the drumming, they start smiling and really getting into it. For many of these students, it is their first time learning the dances of different tribes from around the state. With the Yupik, Inupak, Athabascan, and Aleut dances being performed here, the youth recognize that there are as many similarities between cultures as there are differences. When I was younger at home, I was doing our home dances since um, 1993. But here in Mount Etchcom, this is our first alley dance group since a long time ago, and that group didn't last long, so this is our first year, our alley dance group. It's pretty interesting to learn about the, how different they are, but also how very similar they are. Seeing that we're all from the same place, but in how our languages are similar, and some of the dances are kind of similar too. I think our culture, the Aleut culture, is the fastest dying culture. And I think of it as a privilege to be out here, you know, dancing and showing our culture because um, there's AFN, and I know there's a lot of people there in AFN, but to come this far south down to Sitka, it's, um, it's a good opportunity to be down here to share our culture with other people. Last year I was living in San Diego, so there's like no, they didn't even know what Eskimo was, you know. So got a chance to get involved with it. Just hopped in and started learning the songs and dances. Awesome. Feels good dancing in front of all the people because a lot of people don't got the guts to do that. Stand up in front of a whole bunch of people and dance to your native tradition. Some people are ashamed or something. It's nothing to be ashamed of. For most of these young people, it's a learning experience in learning. Learning what it's like to be away from home. Learning about the different cultures and backgrounds that surrounds them. And most importantly, learning more about themselves and their dreams. I plan to um, go into a couple internships after I graduate. I actually want to go into aerospace or nautical engineering, which is basically rocket science which does sound far-fetched, but if you're determined, I think you can make it. And um, I plan to get a couple degrees through the University of Washington, and um, I also want to apply to MIT. And um, after that, I guess, after I get the career I want, I want to go into teaching, pre preferably as like a professor in a nice college. I want to um, graduate from Edgecombe, then hopefully join the Air Force, because I want to fly. I want to be an elementary teacher. I want to go to college after high school and um, be a teacher here in Alaska. I like to take the future as it comes, and I'm not too sure on what I'll do, but I've been looking at a lot of different colleges. The Air Force Academy looks pretty appealing, interesting. Or I was thinking about college in Oregon because I have some family there too. My future plans are to um, Graduate from Mount Edgecombe and go to aeronautical aviation navigational schools. Yeah, um, so I can maybe be a pilot for a private um, airline or maybe commercial, maybe for Alaska or something like that. I haven't decided what kind of doctor I want to be, but after I'm done with pre-med school and medical school. I'm hopefully going to apply for a job at Alaska Native Medical Center. Yeah, for at least 10 to 20 years. And after that, move to Nome and work at Norton Sound Regional Hospital. Well, I'm probably going to teach junior high or high school. I plan to go back home to teach. And um, right now, I'm thinking of going to UAF or UAA, and then um, go through their student exchange program to go to Portland State or um, maybe Dartmouth, but I don't know, I'll see about that. I'm gonna get into music, write music, 
And I wanna, I got a lot of things I wanna do. I wanna be a chef and a pyrotechnician. I wanna learn how to do big time fireworks shows, like bigger than Disney World show. Pyromania. But I'm first gonna major, get an English major first. So I'm gonna do first so I can write. I am going to become a teacher in Alaska for hopefully for about 10 years and after that I'm gonna go for my master's degree in education and become, a, a, become an administrator principal. I'm gonna follow my dad's footsteps. <laughs> Whether they choose to follow the path of another or set out on a path of their own, the students of this school will have an edge over others. The kind of edge that comes from getting an education at Mount Edgecombe High School. Thank you for all your phone calls and emails. I appreciate feedback from our viewers. Thank you everyone in Canada. We sure appreciate you as well. Hello to our good friends in the Navajo Nation across America and soon to be in the state of Washington with a program called Heartbeat Washington. God bless all of you and join me again for more Native news and information right here on Heartbeat Alaska. To purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. Ask for the program number listed below.